Okay, in this video, it is time to put all your illustrator character drawing skills to the test. This video is going to give you some suggestions on how to start, but then the rest is going to be up to you. Now it's time to show me what you have learned so far. So I'm going to go to File and Open. In the Chapter 6 folder under Demos, I'm going to go to 6.4, Drawing Marvin the Martian. Okay, if you look closely, there are two files here, and I want to start just to point some things out with the bottom one, Marvin the Martian head layers. Okay, so as you can see right here, I've got my scan that I was drawing from, and you'll notice you cannot just do a layer called helmet, okay, because part of the helmet goes around the front of his head, part of the helmet goes under the visor, part of the other side of the helmet goes behind the head. So you have to think about shapes, not actual objects. I won't think of the object of the helmet, I'll think of the shapes that make up a helmet. So I started off this one with just a solid black circle. Okay, then I turned that off and I drew the white eyes. So you could see the eyes sit on top of the circle. Okay, part of the helmet comes out from behind the head. Behind means below. So there's that little piece of the helmet right there. Another part, the whole right side of the helmet was drawn as its own separate piece because the visor covers that. Okay, then the brush, I would not draw this as one layer called brush. I drew it as brush connector, and then coming out from behind that is the base of the brush, and coming out from behind that is the whole side of the base, and then coming out from behind all that are the bristles. Okay, so you have to think of your characters in terms of individual shapes. Now. I'm going to keep this open for a second. I'll close up my Pathfinder. I don't need that. And I'm going to go to File and Open again and open up Draw One Marvin the Martian. Okay. So I have four of them to choose from. You only have to draw one of them. Okay. I've given you four different poses. You can decide which one you want to draw. So let's say, for instance, we want to draw this one, okay? I'm going to unlock both layers. I'm going to take my black arrow, click on this scan and delete it, click and delete it, click and delete it. And that leaves me with three blank artboards. So right down here above my hand tool is my artboard tool. I'm going to click on that, click on an artboard in the middle, and hit delete. Click this artboard, hit delete, click this artboard, hit delete. And now with my black arrow, I'm just going to move this scan next to the page. So when I draw this character, those are the colors I want to use. I will lock both layers again, and now I'll start. I'm going to create a brand new layer. I'll double click the name and just call that black head shape. Okay, I'm going to zoom in. And let me dim my scan a little bit more here. Let me dim that down to, let's say, 15% on my projector screen here on my monitor. All right, black head shape. I'm on a brand new layer, D for default colors. His head is black, not white. So I'm going to click on the white fill and hit the question mark key. And right there is my ellipse tool. Okay, if I hold my shift key, I can start an ellipse. Now I hold my space bar without letting go of my mouse. Hold my space bar and move the ellipse. If it's not big enough, I only let go of my space bar and continue to resize my ellipse right here. And that looks pretty good right there. I let go of the mouse. Then I let go of my keyboard. 
And instead of this being a black outline, I'm going to also click on the fill and make it a black fill. That's all I need for his head. Obviously, I need to turn off that eyeball. Now I create another brand new layer called white eyes. It's a brand new layer, so D for default colors. Even though they're going to be white, I'm not going to fill them white yet. So I'll hit the uh, question mark key, and I'm going to zoom in even closer. Okay, so with my pen tool, I'm going to trace these eyes. So I'm going to go right down this long edge. One there, one before a sharp turn, one after the sharp turn. Option key for a corner. And even though these two look like they connect, I'm going to draw them separately. One point right there for that little turn. Option key for a corner. I'll come down the edge, across the bottom, and all the way back up to the top. I hold option to end at a corner, and I'll drag way up like that. Command click, and there's one eye. Now I'll do the next one. Start up here, click and drag down, maybe about halfway down because that's a long curve. I'll put a point before the sharp turn right here at the end of that sharp turn. I'm just going to disregard this little white shape here. Option key for a corner and come down, come around, and click right there. Option key for a corner and I'll come down, long line like that. Come back up like that. Option key for a corner and I'll come down. I'll come across the bottom of that curve right there. Around this turn right up here. And option key to end at a corner. Command key and click. That will deselect again. And all I have to do for this other part of the eye is just start with another shape like this. I'll click and drag down down, up, and back to the start. There we go. So I'm going to select with my black arrow right across here, and I will hit D for default colors. I don't need the black outline, so I'll click on that and hit my question mark key. Then I click on this shape, and instead of a black outline, I'm going to click the curved arrow. Turn that into a black fill, and all of that sits right on top of his black head. There we go, looking pretty mean and determined. Okay, so I'm going to turn off these two layers, and you'll notice we've got a little piece of the helmet coming out from behind. So I'm going to start below on the layer called Color Reference. I'll make a brand new layer. Double click and I'll just call this back side of helmet. Okay, if I'm on a brand new layer, it's going to be D for default colors. And D for default makes a thin black outline. We want these to be a little bolder for a cartoon character. So way up here at the top, I'm going to click on the name stroke. Okay, if you don't see that, you could also go to Window Menu and Stroke, or there it is right over here. But I like using it right up here. I'm going to set the weight up to 2 by hitting the little up arrow. And since this is a cartoon character, I want the lines to have a softer feel. So I click the middle button for the cap. The cap is like the end of a line. And to go along with that, the middle button for round or softer corners. Then I can just click this bar right across the top and get rid of that stroke panel. I'll click on the white fill. His helmet's not white, it's green later on. Click on the white fill and hit the question mark key. Come in with my pen tool. And since that looks like it comes out from behind his head, I will overlap. Remember, you have to draw the large shape first. So I'm going to click and drag here down to there. 
option key for a corner will go up and up option key for a corner i'll come up and into his head and back to the start command click to deselect and then i'll just start right on the edge click 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 and drag to bend that line right there command click to deselect and then i'll just do this little connection right here click the corner click the corner that's it i select the outer edge and if i hold my space bar i can move this over and here's the trick okay i want to sample this green but i don't want to lose my outline so what you have to do is take your eyedropper hold your shift key and click on the green okay if you do not hold your shift key let me undo this if i select a shape with an outline and I do not hold the shift key, I will lose the outline. Okay, so that is a trick. I draw the outline with a black outline, go to my eyedropper and shift click. Now I can click outside with my black arrow. That piece, which kind of looks like a weird nose, goes underneath or from behind the black head and there's his white eyes. Okay, what I would also do, as I periodically tell you, is save your progress as you go. Every time you finish a layer, save your progress. Okay, I'm going to turn all these off. Start at the top, because now I need to draw the whole right side of his helmet as it wraps around or in front or on top of his head. So I will create another brand new layer. I'll double click to the right because I don't like light blue anchor points. So I'm going to switch these to red anchor points and I will call this right side of helmet. Okay, even though this will eventually be green, I don't want to fill it green yet. So I'm going to click on the fill and hit the question mark key. And I'm going to zoom in so I can see my details. And I'll draw the right side of the helmet with the pen tool. So here's how I would approach this. Start in a corner if I have one. Click. Click. Now I'm going to hold option for a corner. I'll drag down. Let go of the option key. And I'll drag up. Option key for a corner. Click and let go. Click and let go for a straight edge. Click and let go for a straight edge. Now I need to create this curve, but notice it kind of disappears right over here. So I'm going to hold option key for a corner. Click and drag up the curve. Then I'll go right up inside the visor. I'm going to overlap my shapes and I'll click and drag up like that. I'll come over here. Click right here before the turn of this curve right here. Now I'm going to start from this point. Click and drag up to go up over his helmet. Halfway around this long curve, click and drag down. And when I come all the way back to the start, I hold my option key because I'm ending at a corner and I'll click and drag down. That's all I need for that shape of the helmet. Command click, then you draw your details. So I'll just start on this corner. Click, click, option key to start from a corner and I'll go up. And this line will go right up into his visor right there. So that's technically all I had to draw. Okay, once all your shapes are drawn, your lines are drawn, you take your black arrow, select the edge of the big shape. I will hold my shift key with my eyedropper and shift click the green. And there we have it. That piece will wrap on top of his head. The other piece comes out from behind his head. The visor is what covers up all these ugly edges here. So I'm going to turn these layers off. 
make one more brand new layer and I don't like gray anchor points so I'll go to the right double click and I'll set my anchor points to red again they're just easier to see and I'm gonna call this visor same thing as before I know it's gonna be green but I don't want to start with green so I'll click on the fill and hit the question mark key and then I'm gonna draw the very outer edge of the visor not the inside lines just the very outside edge okay so I'm gonna start uh, right here on this corner comes down short line because I want to draw a short little curve down the side of this curve across the bottom of that curve and up to this edge right here I'll come around this sharp turn and go up this is a long sweeping curve to the end of his head right there. So I'll go about halfway up, click and drag. Then I'll come to that corner of his head, click and drag. Option key for a corner. I'll go down the side of his head and right to that side right there. Because I got to make this look like it wraps around the back side of his head option key for a corner and I'll come out I'll come up and I'll come up right there option key for a corner click and drag up this is a long edge all the way back to the start kind of like the back side of his helmet so right here again option key to start halfway across that curve I come down and when I end at a corner, I'm going to hold my option key and drag down. The first thing I always need is the one large outline first. I'll turn on my scan again. Now I do the details. Command click outside and all the rest is just drawing little lines. So I'll start right on the edge of the black, click and drag up, go to this corner, click and drag up to the right command click now I'll start on this edge right down here click and drag around and around option key for a little corner right there I'll make a little bump right in there come halfway up the curve way up here and end right on the edge of the black line like that command click to deselect and you can see if I zoom in right here, he's got one tiny little wrinkle spot or overlap. So I'll just start on the corner and make a tiny little curve right there. Command click. Now I zoom back out by option clicking with my eyedropper a couple of times. Black arrow, you select the edge of the largest shape. I'll scroll over here with my space bar, take my eyedropper and shift click the green so I don't lose my outlines. Hold my space bar and pull it back in. And now you can see that visor covered up this ugly edge right there. The head and the eyes tuck in between and that piece comes out from behind. Okay. I would save your progress at this point. Every time you finish a layer, save your progress. Okay, I'm going to do the rest of this bristle brush on the back of his head. And then the rest of the body is up to you. I'm showing you already too much. I want you to show me what you can do with the Illustrator. Because you practiced on a little alien. Then you practiced on Porky Pig. Then you practiced again on Elmer Fudd. You should get the hang of it by this point. But I'm having a little fun, so I'm going to draw the rest. Okay, I'm going to start underneath on my color reference, and I'll create another brand new layer. Double click on the right, because I don't want black anchor points. I'm already drawing black lines. So I just set all my layers to red anchor points. They're just easy to see. I'll call this layer Brush Connector. It's not going to be green, so I'll click on the green and hit the question mark key. 
And again, with my pen tool, you start with the biggest shape first. So I'll start inside the helmet, click and drag around this edge right here, add another point there, add another point there, and back to the start. Command click, and now I'll do the inner part. So I'll go up, around that curve at the top, back down here, and back to the start. Two simple little shapes. Okay, if I hold my space bar, all of that is orange. So I can just select both pieces. Make sure you don't hit the helmet. Or if you're done, lock your layers when you're done so you can't accidentally hit the helmet. I'll select those two, hold my space bar and come over here. Eyedropper with the shift key and I'll sample that color. Hold my space bar and I'll come back and that looks good. Okay, we'll just click outside to deselect that. Lock that finish layer. Start on color reference again and make another brand new layer. I'll double click to the right. I don't want orange anchor points if I'm drawing an orange shape. So maybe we'll make the color red again and I will call this base of brush. Even though I know it's going to be orange, I don't want to start with orange. So I'll click on the orange fill and hit the question mark key. And now I start by overlapping my shapes again. So I'm going to start inside the helmet. Click and drag up. Before the turn, I put a point. Right after the turn, I put a point. Click. Option key to start from a corner. I'll drag across. Click and drag option key for a corner i'll start to go down that's a long edge so i'll put a point about halfway down that edge right down here i'll click and drag option key to start from a corner i'll go down no option key and i'll drag and find my way back to the start command click to deselect and now i'll draw the detail that is inside Click, click, option key to start from a corner, no option key at the end. I'll just drag two long anchor points right there. Take my black arrow, just select the edge of the large shape. And since I've already sampled a similar color, I'll just take my eyedropper and click on this orange that I started with. And there we go. That's another layer that's done, so I'll lock that. Start again on the layer called color reference because I gotta keep putting layers underneath each other. Another brand new layer, dark green anchor points. Um, those are okay, but I'll double click to the right because I like to use red anchor points. They're just easier for me to see. And I'll call this brush bristles all of this area up here. Okay, I'm gonna click on the orange fill, hit the question mark key, and now I'm gonna draw just the outside edge only. So I'll zoom in one more click so you can see this. Start by overlapping my shape, and I'll click and drag up, and up, and up. Option key to start from a corner, I'll come across there. Option key and click. Click, click, click. Option key to start from a corner and drag. No option key at the end and drag. Option key for a corner and drag. No option key at the end and drag. There's a little bump right here, so I'll option click. Come up a little bit and click. Come over and click and click and click. Make a few little tiny bumps here. Option key to start from a corner. No option key at the end of that curve. Option key and click. Click, click, click. Option key to start from a corner. No option key at the end of a curve. Option key and click to start a straight line. Click for a straight line. Click for a straight line. 
option key to start from a corner, no option key at the end of a curve, option key and click to start a straight line, click to continue a straight line, click, click, and find my way back to the start. Okay, command key and click will deselect. And now all I have to draw is these little brush lines. So I'll just start on the corner, click, click, command click, 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 command click, click and drag, click and drag, click and drag, command click, start on the corner, click, click, command click, start on this corner, click, click, command click, 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 command click, 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 command click, 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 command click. Now with my black arrow, I select the edge of the largest piece, hold my space bar and scroll back over here, take my eyedropper and shift click the yellow. Now I can take my black arrow, click outside to deselect that brush, hold my space bar for the hand tool and I'll pull it back into view. So there, I've got him again from the neck up. Okay, the rest is up to you. If you wanna draw his neck as black, that's fine. Here it's red, you know, do whatever you want. I'm just gonna do one more object to give you a hint on how to approach these shapes. So again, I'm just gonna draw his hand on, I'll just do a layer right here called sample left side hand. Okay, his hand's not gonna be yellow, so I'll click on the fill and hit the question mark key. I wouldn't draw it in this order, I'm just jumping ahead of myself. I would probably draw his neck, then I would draw a layer called shirt, then I would draw a layer called left hand, then a layer on the top of the shirt called right hand. But here's how I'm gonna draw his left hand. You are always going to start with the outer edge first, not the little lines that are inside. Okay, I'm gonna start here and go up and around that knuckle right there. Always a point before a sharp turn, a point after a sharp turn. Then I'm gonna hold option key and come around this knuckle right here. I do not draw inside. I gotta have the very outer edge of his hand drawn first. Option for a corner and I'll come down and around and around and around and I hold option to end at a corner. This is what you wanna draw first, just the basic outline. Okay, details come last. So I command click outside, start on the corner, click and drag, click and drag, command click. 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 And now it looks like he has fingers. Okay, then I select a big shape and I can fill that with white. That'll block the scan from coming through. But you gotta start with the big shape and then you add your little details at the end. Okay, the big shape is the one that needs color. The details are just little lines. So I'll undo, 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 and put all those back. So now you can see he's got a, a believable hand right there. Like I said, the rest is going to be up to you. Every time you do a new piece, start with a new layer. Every time you're done with a layer, save your progress. I look forward to seeing what you can come up with. Now that I've shown you how to start, you need to finish. When you're done, you can delete your uh, two bottom layers. Your two bottom layers are your scans. So I don't need the template when I'm totally done. And I don't need the color reference when I am totally done. You're gonna draw your own version of Marvin 
and send it to me as a finished Illustrator file. But that's all I'm going to show you. Again, it's time for you to show me what you can draw now that you've had enough practice with it. So I wish you good luck and I look forward to seeing your end result.